in an effort to counter the growing epidemic of heroin and prescription drug use. The FBI and the DEA recently released a documentary exposing the dangers of addiction. It's aimed at students and young adults, and it profiles a number of people affected by heroin abuse. I didn't care. I didn't think about it. I just did it. Once we started getting high, it was done. She was 17 years old, and the only way I knew about it is because she was arrested. started smoking pot around 18. And I was always offered prescription drugs, and I never would take them. Then I was in a car accident. I was running down in the middle of the night to get some water, fell down the stairs, landed on my back on the wooden floor. It started for me with pot and uh, just progressed into um, hell, basically. Weed didn't do it for me, but definitely weed started it all for me. There was definitely something I didn't see until it was too late. I had no clue what I was getting myself into. Justice reporter Paula Reed is with me now from Washington. I think it's surprising to see the FBI and the DEA getting into the documentary business trying to get a grip on this epidemic. It is surprising, Contessa. This is a part of a new approach to this epidemic. Now, many people, as the evidence shows in this documentary, also illustrates find heroin because they are first addicted to prescription painkillers. Both have a similar impact on the body. And for people who are addicted to prescription painkillers, heroin is much more accessible and it's much less expensive. You don't have to ask a doctor for it. You don't have to beg your friends and family to give you some pills. You can go to a drug dealer and get heroin for a fifth, maybe even a sixth of the price. But this is a mainstream epidemic. And by that, I mean that presidential candidates up in New Hampshire, they're all talking about this. Now, New Hampshire has been hit especially hard by heroin overdoses and the heroin epidemic. You see, as you mentioned, the antidote being sold at neighborhood drugstores, CVS and Walgreens. Now, there is a criticism, too, that suddenly this new approach that this has only become mainstream because it's starting to impact white middle-class families when traditionally there's been a war on drugs that has disproportionately impacted low-income and minority communities. Okay, so given the discrepancies in the way that the FBI and the DEA have approached drug addiction in different communities, what now? I mean, you, you can stem the tide of illegal heroin if you can get at the suppliers, if you can get at the people who are pulling it into the United States, but prescription painkillers, I mean, that's available at your pharmacy and your doctor's office. Exactly. Now, there's a lot of different issues here, and they're trying, again, unconventional approaches, things that they haven't traditionally done in the war on drugs. Some of them are the DEA had actually offers to take back additional extra pain pills that you may have so they can properly dispose of them, because part of the problem is that these pills are lying around. People take them, they become addicted, and then potentially move on to heroin. Another approach is this documentary. This is supposed to replace sort of traditional curriculum. I don't know if you had D.A.R.E. when you were in school. I yeah. did a little workbook. I think there were some movies, but they're trying new ways to reach out to young people and really tell the story about how you could potentially consider a drug heroin that you could swear you'd never touch. But if you potentially get addicted to prescription pain pillars, there is this pain pain pills. There is this very clear path that many people have traveled. So it's part of an unconventional approach. We also see local law enforcement taking a new approach. Some cities and towns saying they will not arrest or prosecute people who are addicted to these drugs. Instead, they will get them treatment. So again, it's an unprecedented epidemic and they are taking an unprecedented approach. What kind what kind of role does the price of heroin play into the fact that we're seeing a growing addiction? I think it's huge, Contessa, because it's so inexpensive. And when you are that deep into addiction, you're trying to feed that addiction, it costs a lot of money. So if you can get a similar high to what you're getting on prescription pain medications for a fifth, for a sixth, just a fraction of the price, clearly you are not going to hesitate to go in that direction. So you see a lot of people in this documentary, a lot of other people that we've seen who have been addicted to these drugs who say, I never would have touched that stuff. But once you're addicted and you start to run out of money, it becomes a very desirable alternative. Not only because it's inexpensive, it's also very accessible. Mexican drug cartels know there's a demand here. They're flooding markets with this heroin, which also helps to keep the prices down. Paula Reed in Washington, thanks for giving us a glimpse at the new battle on drugs.